Hell Priestess from Hellraiser Explored Evolution of Kirsty Cotton From a Simple Girl to Demented Cenobite The movies in the Hellraiser series often test the borders of the extreme with their elements of sadomasochism, visceral gore, dark fantasy, and somewhat Lovecraftian sci-fi. In horror flicks, often the last woman alive left to take on the killer is referred to as the final girl. Don't do that! Go to hell! Kirsty Cotton, however, has never been referred to as the final girl in the Hellraiser franchise. This is probably because the films are not like just any other slasher franchise, and her role in the series is pretty underrated and unique. The character first appeared in the first Hellraiser movie, which was based on Clive Barker's novella, and since then has been seen in three other Hellraiser films. Kirsty's character starts off as a beautiful blend of inner strength and quiet vulnerability. She is a compelling character and is fiercely independent. Her interactions with the Cenobites are eventful, adding spice to the Hellraiser narrative. She is often daring and doesn't seem to be disturbed by any threat, especially when it comes to protecting herself or her loved ones. We want the man who did this. Kirsty Cotton has been an essential part of the franchise, and actor Ashley Lawrence certainly did justice to the role. In this video, we will tell you all about the evolution of this intriguing character and her remarkable journey from a simple girl to a Cenobite. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Story of Kirsty Cotton Before She Became Hell Priestess as we have already mentioned, Kirsty first appeared in the original Hellraiser movie, which was based on the horror novella by Clive Barker. This story concerned an unfaithful wife, Julia, her husband, and the husband's deviant brother who used the wife to do his bidding. He required a steady supply of blood, and Julia would bring him victims. In the novel, Kirsty was a friend of the husband, and she even had a secret crush on him. However, when the work was adapted into a movie, her character was changed to be the man's daughter, and therefore Julia's stepdaughter. In the film, Kirsty Cotton is the young and fiercely independent daughter of Larry Cotton. Julia Cotton is his second wife, and the family moves into the house of her uncle Frank, who has been missing for some time. Kirsty wants to live on her own and finds her own place. I found a room. You what? I said I found a room. One day, as she is passing the house, she sees an unknown man, leading her to believe that Julia was cheating on her father. To find out more, she secretly followed the man into the house and discovered something terrifying. She watches her stepmother attack the man all of a sudden and stares on horrified as a skinless creature, who is actually her uncle Frank, uses the man's blood to nourish himself. As Frank tries to eat him, the man tries to escape and Frank gives chase. This is when he finds Kirsty in the hiding and attacks her. She grabs the Le Marchand's box and reflects to defend herself, and in doing so, she realizes that the box has some kind of power over him, so she throws it out of the window to buy her some time to escape. What in fucking heaven? Kirsty then manages to evade a distracted Frank and escapes the house. She goes to get the box from outside, but all the stress causes her to faint. When she wakes up, she finds herself in a hospital. She initially thinks that it was all a bad dream, but when the doctor hands her the puzzle box, she realizes that the horror she experienced was real. While fiddling with the box, she manages to solve the puzzle and unknowingly summons the Cenobites and their vicious leader, Pinhead. Her quick thinking allows her to strike a bargain with them, however. She is spared because she promises to tell them the whereabouts of her uncle, who has been hiding from them all along. I can, I can leave you and you, you can take him back. Kirsty then escapes from the hospital and returns to Frank's house. She meets her stepmother Julia and her father, who claim that Frank is dead, and even show her the body. She is unaware that it is actually Larry who died, killed by Frank who has taken his skin to pose as Kirsty's father. The Cenobites reappear and Frank tries to kill Kirsty, but he ends up stabbing Julia to death after which the Cenobites proceed to dismember him with hooks. When the Cenobites turn to Kirsty, she desperately tries to flee from them. She comes across the Le Marchand box one more time and uses it to send the Cenobites back to their hellish realm. She then tries to put an end to the menace of the Cenobites once and for all by burning the puzzle box, but something appears in the flames, and the box is transformed into a winged creature that flies away. Kirsty Cotton was pivotal to the plotline of the film, the hero who determines the course of the narrative. Her quick thinking ultimately saved her from Frank and the Cenobites, and it was clear that a sequel would see her taking up another important role. Kirsty was next seen in Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, which starts off with her character in a hospital, recovering from the trauma of the previous movie. She consults Dr. Philip Channard and his assistant Kyle McRae on her experiences and tells them all about the Cenobites. She has a feeling that the mattress on which her stepmother died has some kind of link to the hellish creatures and wants it destroyed. 
You have got to destroy that mattress. Kirsty is initially unaware that Dr. Philip has been searching for the puzzle box for quite some time, and after hearing everything she has to say, he uses the mattress to summon Julia, utilizing the blood of the mentally ill patient who cut himself on it. This patient had some disturbing hallucinations of bugs crawling all over his skin, and he manically tried to cut them off with a razor. Once the blood summons Julia, she eats the patient, and Kirsty realizes that something hellish has been awoken one more time. She tries to put an end to this and seeks the help of the assistant, Kyle. But unbeknownst to Kyle, Kirsty has plans of her own. Her idea is to somehow use the Lament configuration to bring her dead father back to life. The plan goes wrong when Julia eats Kyle, and Kirsty is somehow transferred into the hellish domain of the Cenobites, alongside Dr. Philip and another patient of the hospital. Kirsty and the patient are attacked by the Cenobites, but just in the nick of time, she alerts Pinhead about a strange coincidence. She shows him the picture of a man who is somewhat identical to him, and Pinhead learns that he was a human once, just as all the other Cenobites were too. You were human. There is a shocking twist, though, because Dr. Philip is now a Cenobite himself, and he kills off all the other Cenobites, including Pinhead. The psychotic doctor goes on a rampage, and Kirsty and the patient get together, attempting to solve the puzzle box and bring an end to the mayhem. They manage to lure Channard into the realm of the Cenobites yet again, and this time, Leviathan kills him. Kirsty and the patient then make use of the puzzle box one more time to get back to Earth. In the second film, Kirsty Cotton serves as the central character and the narrative revolves around her exploits. But even after the success of this movie, she was only seen in a small and insignificant cameo in Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Kirsty was last seen in the sixth movie of the franchise titled Hellraiser, Hellseeker. Here, she married Trevor Gooden, who is now suffering from amnesia from a car accident. Pinhead comes to remind him that he was the one who tried to kill Kirsty in the first place, and that she supposedly died in the car crash. According to Pinhead, Trevor had repeatedly cheated on her and used the puzzle box to have her killed. However, it turns out that the sinister plan hadn't worked quite as Trevor intended. Once the Cenobites arrived, Kirsty made a deal with them where she offered five souls of her own. I will bring you five souls in exchange for mine. She then went on to kill three of Trevor's mistresses and the friend with whom he had conspired to kill her. The fifth sacrifice is Trevor himself, and he is shown to be in the realm of the Cenobites already. Kirsty had outsmarted him, and while they were driving together, she shot him in the head, causing the accident. She even manages to evade all charges and frames Trevor for the murders that she committed, and the movie ends as Kirsty Cotton walks away with the Le Marchand's box. Her conversion into Hell Priestess the character of Kirsty Cotton goes way beyond her few movie appearances. In fact, the comic lore is pretty extensive, so we have tried to get a piece of that for you here as well. In the following section, we will dive deep into the comic series and how they have dealt with our protagonist. The story starts off with a prisoner languishing in some godforsaken prison. A priest-like person appears and provides him with the infamous puzzle box and suggests that it might be the only possibility of escape for him. When the convict solves the puzzle box, in comes Pinhead, vicious as ever. He draws hooks and chains through the priest and he is rendered skinless and in agonizing pain. The next issue shows us a different side of Pinhead. He has been summoned by a girl who has unknowingly solved the puzzle box whilst locked in a room. He is still relentless, but his words show that signs of boredom have begun to creep in. He is visibly frustrated, wondering if there's nothing new to be done, given the same old pleas by the victims and the same old torture methods. The woman is torn apart, just as you would expect from Pinhead, though he claims that he wants something greater than this. At this point, a strange female Cenobite is introduced who seems to have some sort of affection for Pinhead. When Pinhead dares to head into the forbidden territory in Hell, she seems concerned. The story then shifts to our protagonist. We see Kirsty Cotton dealing with the scars left by her past experiences. She seems to have a man in her life who loves her dearly, but she wants her emotional wounds to heal first. We also see that she has painted a huge picture of Pinhead, the tormentor of her sanity. Kirsty Cotton, it seems, is onto something. She has gathered a group that wants to try their luck with the puzzle box again. They manage to trace the location of the box and head to a house. Kirsty holds the family at knife point, robbing them to get the box. A lot is at stake, but she does not seem to be worried about the consequences. It looks like her life of trauma and tragedy has prepared her to embrace the worst. When she activates the box, it summons something different this time around. These are not the Cenobites we are used to, but some twisted, dark creatures from the depths of hell. Soon, however, a familiar item appears. A chain and hook emerge from nowhere, striking one of Kirsty's friends. They all put up a fight, and the damage is contained, although a major tragedy could not be averted. The family that they were robbing seems to have suffered from the summoning, having been ripped to shreds. The story shows a glimpse of Pinhead and his female companion. The latter is worried about the fate of the last puzzle box, but Pinhead is confident that human sins will bring in many individuals. Hell is persistent. 
Kirsty is distraught at the thought of the suffering caused to the family by her actions, but the story outlines something far more sinister cooking in the background. The man who loves Kirsty is on a tour for his lectures, and he is being pursued by a man who has been assisting Pinhead. At airport security, we see in the man's briefcase the dreaded lament configuration. Throughout the comic strip, we watch Kirsty Cotton desperately trying to get back at her nemesis. Her unending conflict with Pinhead, however, takes a strange turn. Her group, called the Harrowers, are determined to end the menace of the hellish dimension, but failed miserably in their first attempt. Over time, more and more loved ones suffer and fall prey to the Cenobites. The other storyline, however, is focused on how Pinhead is doing no better with his life in hell. He is bored and tired of the monotony, and we even see him giving a hard-hitting sermon aimed at his Cenobite minions. Inside him, there is a newfound longing for his past human life. This brought a strange conundrum to the horror story. The villain and the protagonist both have a dilemma that can be easily solved. Pinhead could return to his life as a human, escape the hellish domain, and Kirsty could be reunited with her fallen loved ones. Clearly, this called for a barter. Kirsty vowed to change the hellish realm from within, and their exchange of eternal damnation was a sight to behold. We see Kirsty prying out the nails on his head, and Pinhead summons tentacles to strip him of his Cenobite appearance. At the same time, Kirsty strips bare and embraces hell. One character seeks salvation while the other merely delves deep into the darkness. The same tentacles that stripped Pinhead now put the Cenobite uniform on Kirsty. The pins are drafted in her head as Pinhead is heard telling her to savor the feeling because it would be her last. This is how a new Hell Priest is born. Unlike the latex and leather-bound appearance of Pinhead, she is seen adorned in white. She instills the sensation of a human being in Pinhead and he is restored to life as Elliot Spencer. With those same tentacles wrapping him up in a confetti of flesh, Kirsty, however, seems to have very different philosophies than Pinhead. She isn't here to rule, but to be with her friends who had died for her. But there is yet another twist to the tale. It turns out that even in his human form, Elliot Spencer is no less evil than he was as Pinhead. He ridicules Kirsty's hopes for change in hell, and warns her of what lies ahead. To our horror, we watch her friends and lover emerge, but they have all been turned into demonic creatures and are far from what they once used to be. Kirsty does, however, have one tiny bit of payback for Spencer, ordering him to be ripped apart once again. We then see two people in the real world find Captain Elliot Spencer suffering from the goriest of injuries, lying in a pool of blood. The future of Kirsty's character in the Hellraiser franchise. If you are still with us after all this rigorous comic book detail, you are indeed a true Hellraiser fan. In case you are, you are probably wondering if they will bring back Kirsty Cotton's character and any future entries in the franchise. There has, in fact, been a lot of speculation regarding the presence of this iconic character in the upcoming HBO series. Kirsty is clearly an intriguing character who deserves to be rated as one of the best Scream Queens of all time. It also seems in the movies that there is some mysterious connection between her and Pinhead, which accounts for her ability to escape unhurt every time they meet. The comic book story is morbid and hard-hitting, but even there, we were led to believe that there might have been something unspoken between the characters. If a story, a comic or a film, was to explore such a plotline, it would certainly make for a very interesting reading, for viewing. With the HBO series likely to release sometime this year, we are eagerly anticipating the possibilities. Not much is known about the plot, but we wouldn't be surprised to see Kirsty introduced in a new Avatar. There are so many existing storylines to be explored, and the ever-increasing and evolving Hellraiser lore certainly allows plenty of options for a future featuring of the Horror Queen. Ashley Lawrence, who did so well with the role for a long time, is past her prime and perhaps could no longer play the young character we are used to. Then again, the script may demand a matured and aging version of Kirsty Cotton. Hellraiser really knows how to keep fans reveling in mystery. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.